Now, Data Wataran. All of us are talking on the Party Line Talk Show on K1037. And a good afternoon and welcome to Data Watarda Party Line Talk Show. I'm your host, Lance Stacy, and uh, today is our first MCK Friday. Well, we're returning back after a couple of weeks hiatus and uh, my guest in studio is the newly elected chief, Ross Montour. I think that's got quite the ring to it. <laughs> I want to start out by saying, Sego sa wagwego, nagiginawa gari wanagari, Ross Montori, who did stunun, this is Dede Watarun, the Party Line Talk Show. And that's how everybody has known me for a number of years now. Uh, and so this is quite an interesting uh, switch around. I mean, I've been on during the elections uh, uh, process. Um, and uh, now, so it's official. Uh, I, you know, in, in fact, what I would like to do actually in terms of uh, starting by way of uh, starting is to, number one, I want to thank uh, those people in Gadawangi who put their faith uh, and trusted me. And, and by the way, it was a very, it was a very close race. Uh, I mean, it's really a matter of a handful of votes, you know, a handful and one finger um, separating me from uh, one of the departing chiefs, uh, Billy Dibel, who was very gracious uh, um, at the office. He was, uh, he was in on uh, Tuesday, uh, sorting through his, his effects at the, at the office. And uh, uh, he congratulated me and wished me the best. And uh, in return, I did the same. I also would like to say, well, thank you for uh, Mr. Patton. Also, Bobby, uh, for his time on council. And Martin LeBourne, who had been there for, gee was uh, uh, 16 years and did so much in the area of housing. You know, that came out in some of our discussions over the last few days. Yes. Uh, you have to give him credit for the work that he did with housing uh, uh, and sort of special needs areas. And that was always something that was near and dear to his heart. And, you know, for many years, I mean, uh, he served uh, Gunawagi in that capacity, as well as also on uh, the the, um, the Iroquois caucus uh, file, uh, which, will, which will be something I, I will be looking at also uh, down the road as much as possible. I mean, I know what my interests are, but before I again get into that and you, any of your questions, <laughs> I do want to also include uh, and give a nod uh, and props to uh, the electoral officer, Angus L. Montour, and also his uh, Muriel uh, White Rice, um, and their, all of their staff and all of the people who, who uh, acted as... Um, um, candidates, um, monitors, uh, they, they did a bang up job. And, you know, it was, it was a record for the, the least number of spoiled ballots. Uh, of, I thought of that was something. It was remarkable. I mean, it was a, that, and that's a testament to how well organized it was. I mean, of course, you know, sometimes it, being the electoral office could be a, can be a thankless job. Uh, but uh, kudos to those guys, to Angus Nyawagoa and uh, Muriel Nyawagoa and everybody else. And my personal counter was Alana Atwin, and I want to thank her from the bottom of my heart. She had her A game on, as, as promised. And uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm really, really um, thankful and happy to be in a position uh, that I that the, the community has entrusted to me. One thing the point was made on on uh, last the Sunday after the election was. Um, you know, I mean, the 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 thing about any of our elections, if we say, well, you, there are potentially, um, I don't know how many thousand voters. Right. Uh, this was a sort of a record low, and there were three open seats, and 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 naturally, the community Gunawagi will will choose those people first, uh, say who have you know experience. Yeah. And so clearly, I mean, I mean you, you had you had the. Th- uh, Three returning councillors, two especially, one a former grand chief, and also Lloyd Phillips, uh, who also should be pointed out as working as a technician for the Mohawk Council uh, for the last while, a number of files. Uh, and, uh, and Tanya Perron also, I mean, bringing uh, some legal knowledge to yeah. the table. Um, but beyond that, it was a question of, you know, how much of an appetite for change was there in the community and and there i mean it was i don't you know i don't take it lightly you know and say well you know uh, that that it was that close i expected it to be um as it should be as it should be um that said um it's no longer a question of how many votes it was it's a question of in the position um 
that you, everyone at the table serves the community to, to the best and fullest of their abilities uh, with, with the, the best interests of, of Ganwage and Ganwagerono in mind. And, th- and that's, that's really, that, that's my, uh, my goal. Just let me ask a question before we get it. I have specific questions sure. for you, but um, I, gu- I guess the one thing I wanted to know, you talked about the change. Do you believe that the change was enough? I think a message was sent by the community. Do I think the change was enough? I, I, I think, let me, let me answer you this way, uh, Luann. The change is what the community was prepared absolutely, to make. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and and I, I, the way I personally look at, say, um, the, oppor- uh, the opportunity that I've been given is it's really in a way, you know, uh, enough of the community saying, you know what, we're, we're going to give you a shot. Let's, yeah. let's change it up a little bit. Yeah. Um, so now we have new on council. We have Tanya. Um, who, I mean, she actually was the number one vote getter, and yes. that's extremely unusual yeah. uh, for a first-time candidate. Yeah. It's sometimes it's very difficult to run and get in the first time out, uh, but to get that many votes uh, is a testament to the role she's played in the community as an advocate for people uh, legally and just her presence here. Um, but I mean, Harry Rice is new. Yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, so the people looked at Harry, and Harry also also has 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 really, I think, a good broad profile in Absolutely. the community, uh, and people recognize him as being a good man. Yeah, you know. And when I say a good man, I mean I don't mean you know like he's got a uh, ten degrees and say, and that's valuable too. Uh, but in 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 his own his own spirit, he, he's a he, good person, and he's active in the community. He's involved. He you know. So and and I think people were looking for that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I read a lot of comments and saw a little, a lot of feedback, and that was one of the things that people said is that they wanted to see some kind of change. And I, I think a message was sent. I also wanted to also point out that um, the issue regarding women on leadership—that's the second time that the women have gotten top vote in the yeah. last two elections. So you know, uh, Gusanahoe Sky Deer, and again, they were they were up there. They're, they were both in the yeah. seven hundreds. Yeah. Okay, and uh, whether you whether one, whether a person disagrees with some of the positions or, or and that's politics, yes. by the way, uh, that that Gusanahoe has had over over the tenure of her yes. service on council to the community. Um, she also has a good mind, absolutely, and is active uh, in the community. And so I mean, that that was, you know, I mean, that was a very strong uh, approval rating. Absolutely. Uh, given them, also given the fact that, I mean, the, if you take into account that the, the, the turnout was lower than it had been the previous election by, by a few hundred. Yeah. And I, and I think in part that's because um, there wasn't a race for a grand chief. Uh, True. There may True. be other factors, though, yeah. as well. Um, but... Uh, with with Tanya and they're very strong people and I think if you look at uh, again what you don't have to, my view is that at the table you don't have to agree on all things except one thing yeah and that's that we're here to serve the, the people of Kanawake and I, right now my sense I'll, I'll tell you that uh, the first few days my first week uh, on council at the table I, I think there's a lot of excitement mm-hmm. around the table okay that um that maybe that change was a good thing. It's always sometimes good to just shake it up a mm-hmm. little bit and uh, and then to bring some new faces. So I yeah. think I'm looking to some uh, forward to some exciting um, opportunities to to advance uh, Ganawagi's uh, cause. Yeah. Uh, well, I, 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 I let's uh, take a break. We're almost at the first break because I'd like to then focus on you. Um, uh, what it's been like? It must be like a little bit of a whirlwind from Saturday and then just jumping right in. And, and I want to hear about that okay. as a new person, because I think most people in the community don't understand the changes, adjustments, and I don't see it that big a change for you because you're politically active. So I know you know, I know you're active in the community, but I'd like to just hear your take on it. And I think sure. the community would be interested. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. <laughs> And welcome back to Data Watarda Party Line Talk Show. I'm your host, Led Stacy, and today's MCK Friday. And joining me uh, for the full hour is newly elected Chief Ross Montour. And uh, we talked a little bit about um, 
the actual elections and overall thing, but I really would like to focus on what your experience has been like from being nominated on Saturday, coming here on Sunday, saying a few words, and now like hitting the ground running. You know, what what, what has it been like for you? Well, okay, it's just to, to clarify, uh, yeah. the, the, the nomination uh, was a Saturday in, in May. Yes, sorry, so there's, yes. So, yes. Well, I, I'm not saying that just to yeah. correct you. Yeah. Uh, I'm just saying that that was the beginning of, of, of an, actually an ongoing process. It's in, true, in I should have went back further. But because I, you, you know, I did run in 2015. Uh, and I, and I, given the, the, the vote count then, it was, it, it, it was still fairly close. And I, I'm not... I'm not one to get discouraged. Um, and so I, I, my, my sense that night in 2015, right. when, uh, when it didn't go my way in terms of the number of votes, uh, my feeling was, you know, we asked people interviewed me afterwards and I, you know, I said, look at them. Okay. I'm okay with, with, uh, the choice of the community. Um, I, and I'm at peace with that. And so, I mean, even entering into, um, the, I knew, I knew, um, Fairly early on, that I would that I would again uh, seek office, um, but but doing that was it was with some degree of, of, of peace. Like I had uh, some sense of from sitting in, in your chair, uh, as, uh, the host of a Didawatardo now over three years, having talked to a, a number of portfolio chiefs uh, and the, and the grand chief uh, about things external, things internal. Um, you know, the, there was a whole court case thing, and so I, I, I w- had a sense of you know, like I, I, I want to, want to be in that place, uh, to play a part in all of those things. Um, so for me, but yet still, uh, was a sense of being at at um at peace, at ease with it, regardless. Mm-hmm. It's funny. I like uh, somebody pointed out to me they they had the video right. of Angus mm-hmm. reading the results, and I'm looking at paper, and it was kind of that was kind of an odd thing because we were given blank pieces of paper and we're trying to catch up, and we were like the uh, last group out, mm-hmm. uh, up, actually out of the building, and uh, and at some point I was preparing myself to say almost making it again, uh, and then suddenly there was Lindsay and um, and um, I've been Lloyd extending their hands and congratulating me. And it's somehow, and there was the line between 11 and 12. Uh, and uh, so when you asked earlier, you said, well, how did, how did, how did you react to that? Well, it, 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 it kind of, I went home and I sat with my granddaughters and I, and I, and I sat with Lynn and um, we, we just sort of, Debriefed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad As you like did a, debriefing because you know. yeah yeah no I I uh, so I, I that's the way I spent the first first night and it really I didn't get to sleep till about three o'clock and um, because it it just is a, quite of a different feeling you know to say you know what well, okay now you n- can put your money one, where your mouth is well that's yeah. it, that's yeah, part of it right? I mean part of it part of it is that is is okay now now you have a different hat on now your your shoe is in a different or your foot is in a different shoe. Yeah. Um, but there's also the thing about now, you know what? Now you have an opportunity, okay? And somewhere in the middle of meets is, um, okay, you talked, you said, now do. Yes. And see, and see where true. you get. And so um, still there's walking in on Tuesday. Yes. That, that, <laughs> walking in on Tuesday and... and um, and going through, you know, a basic orientation on Tuesday um, was that you, you start to feel. I mean, the, number one, you have to take into account that the, the Mohawk Council structure, uh, and that by that I mean all of the departments. I mean, you're talking about 352 people, employees, yeah. okay, not counting the, the, the people on council uh, who are elected officials. But the, the number of departments that exist, okay, now all of yesterday, at the morning, three hours in in the council chamber was was going through the organogram of the Mohawk Council of Ganawagi in all the departments and meeting uh, and and uh, the the heads of those departments. Like, God, uh, Kevin Kennedy, for instance. I mean, I, I geez, offhand, you know, I'm just guesstimating. You yeah. know, to say like uh, ten different departments That's... for anywhere from uh, housing to environment to to public works, to the school bus drivers, and, and and all of that, and so getting a handle on that, and meeting everybody in the building, you know, you have you have uh, the finance department, Paul Paul Rice, uh, it's quite impressive. I I found, 
you know, in terms of explaining what the financial outlook for the for the community is over the next while. Uh, and I gotta say, uh, if per, if the projections are right, things I'd, I'd like to sh- sh- share that. I don't think I'm uh, you know speaking out of line right. uh, for for the table, but things look fairly they, they they look brighter than they did a few years back when we were talking about. Uh, reaching a, a, a threshold where we were we had over outstripped what our surplus was in terms right. of meeting, so we end up with a balanced uh, budget at the end. Um, so I did that that part has been both exciting and daunting. I got to yeah. say it. Yeah. You know, it's a it, it's a lot to take in, and really, uh, Luann, uh, I can go on. He says that this is a month long process. People right. ask me, "Well, have you decided what the portfolios are?" Um, the, the, the council has been looking at a sort of a, a, a different kind of way of how those things are allocated. Uh, it's called, uh, SOD, strategic, strategic organizational, uh, I think development. I, think, I hope I got that right, Clinton. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is, it, and, and, and how the portfolios, um, how they, 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 they end up being spread out. Uh, and, and so you divide that into, say, two basic categories of what are internal and what are external uh, kinds of interests and portfolios. Uh, and then, granted, there are things, obviously, which are, are overlapping. If you talk about lands, it's yes. overlapping. If you talk about um, the uh, the Ganyakahaga of Ganawagela, it's overlapping. Obviously, when you talk about uh, the, the, the upcoming residency, yes. well, that's going to be overlapping uh you know for the past year and a half i mean i don't know i didn't really kind of make a uh, a big thing of uh, announcing what i'm doing on the outside of k103 or or, or my businesses uh, but i but but i sat on the uh the land use steering committee and so and i, I entered that because i recognized um the importance of of jurisdiction over land yeah. and our need to to remove the the government from having a say on that to to the point where we exercise total jurisdiction over that because there are problems that arise that affect things like uh, residency that affect uh, yeah. membership anybody with a bank card and then yeah. you get into those things yeah um i i guess uh, one of the things and i have a caller who asked the question and i may as well put it out there do you support a monthly band meeting and i guess that was one of the topics That's, that, that is, was thrown across yeah. you know and proposed by many community members and some of the people who were the candidates you know debated a bit on it so you know what's your thoughts and feelings on that well, okay. Let me let me start w- w- with this. The, the the discussions that ha- had taken place. I mean, actually, one of the first things when we had, we met as a council was, uh, do let, let's say, do we need to talk about that? We need to talk about that. And, and I think one of the things is, is that you know you you heard it. I mean, there were people asked for it. I know I could I name the people that asked yeah. for it. I mean, I mean, Paul Deere is 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 somebody. This is very important to Paul. Uh, Chris Montour mentioned it on uh, candidates night. Very important. Yeah. Um, and then you have the other side is say, well, okay, but, you know, the turnouts have been, you know, like uh, a handful or is it this? And then some of the structural things is if you have a number of updates and then you have an open uh, uh, session in within the meeting um, and it's quarterly, well, then you have, you know, like potentially you, as as things sort of play out or drag out over the, the, the length of the hours, usually set for, I believe, 7 to 10. Yeah. Okay. And then sometimes that open discussion period ends up being cut short. Yeah. And then you're going to wait for another three months. So this is this is what I say. I mean, I, I would support anything that, that allows for Ganoa Garono to have um, – contact with um, transparency with the chiefs on council. So one of the things I think I'm not, and then I'm, I don't think I'm alone in this and it's just kind of how you do that. Absolutely. Uh, but one of the things that, that I said, and this is one of the things that was brought to me. I mean, I had the, uh, it, it was important to me to be nominated by women the first time I ran and I wanted to be the same again, but my nominator the first year I went to see her and she said, you know, Augie Russ, you know, I, I don't even know if I'm going to vote. Thank God she voted because she was part of that, you know, uh, slight spread that I had. But one of the things that she was concerned about was that um, the feeling of, of, of the community not being heard or the community not being listened to. Um, and if you could bring that to the table, 
if if that could be a part of what you could change, then 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 I would be very happy, and that would change how I'm feeling because she, she was feeling very discouraged. Um, so for me, I think one of the things is I, I, if I had to call it and call it a name, I, I, I would say I'm interested in seeing what could be developed in terms of uh, something uh, maybe along the lines of gathering, gathering the minds, uh, gathering you know d- I, different I, different voice for the community. Yeah. Uh, I, I, one of the other new uh, uh, counselors, re- newly returned counselor, said said you know like what would be the problem if uh, say over the year uh, two or maybe three chiefs. Okay, uh, once a month, uh, meet with the community and talk about what their portfolios are, talk about things there. But also, I think there also needs to be, there needs to be a way for a community to say, you know, this, this is the things we want to talk about. Yes. You know, yeah. and, and to be listened to, to be heard. Now, being listened to and heard doesn't necessarily always work out to, because we have to take into account, you have all things considered and all people considered, all voices considered. Yeah. Um, but to be heard, seriously heard, seriously bringing those things back to the table. And that's how you should, that's how we as a table should be looking at setting, setting the course over the next three years, six years, nine years, a hundred years. Is by is by bringing the people's voices into it. So I realize that that it may sound like I'm going here and there around around the the issue, but I would say I mean if if, if we had monthly meetings and and it they, there was you know uh, uh, um, you know a good turnout and if if it can't be that way, then let's look at different Something kinds else, of ways yeah. you know like and and, and I'm, I'm really really interested in that because I I, I it's important to me to hear what the community has to say. And I guess I'll, I'll tie it into um, um, prior to um, the um, candidates and, and that. There was the issue of the cultural center and the land being proposed near uh, the Gunawaga Survival School. And we'll use that as a model because it was the first time that people came out and it was okay that people didn't agree. It may not have been the best process, but it was a process and people felt heard and people, you know, I, I saw both sides. So for me, I, I understood. And I think majority of the community did there, there, there was no question. Um, however, allowing that process to happen was a possible way to get people engaged. What are people's thoughts? What were people thinking? What were, and I mean, it's not finished yet, but at least one step forward. And, and people went out. That was a good amount of people who went to that, to that evening. What, you know? <clears throat> yeah, if I could, uh, uh, you know, for me, I went to the first meeting, public meeting, uh, and, I, and I listened. And, and, you know, I was already kind of based on what was presented um, number one, I'm a supporter of the uh, Gowana Rowdy Jukwa Cultural Center. Oh, yeah. For I'm sure. also uh, a supporter of uh, the theater. Yeah. It, uh, you know, I mean, the, the Turtle Island Theater Company has for too long not had a home. Okay. And, 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 and that's not just uh, something simple. When I was uh, 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 writing for the Eastern Door, um, you know, I, I covered the theater a lot. You know, so I talked to the people involved uh, um, about it, and I talked to people that were involved in it. Okay, and so it's not you know there, it it really functioned uh, in a way that, that that brought in kids, older people in the community, uh, but also um, you know there were people that were involved in the theater group that we they were they were just shy people who uh, weren't really. You know, what did wasn't a natural thing you would expect, yeah. but by being a part of that, you know, that added something to their lives, in, you know, in terms of the development of confidence. Plus, plus, okay, it wasn't just, you know, just some mealy little thing that, that say, say people went and they, they pretended to be actors and actresses. You if you look at the number of the people that have been involved with the, the, the uh, Turtle Island Theater Company and you see their presence on uh, Mohawk Girls, you can see their... So people have moved on and into the profession. And uh, I, I think that's we need that uh, in the community. So that was the thing. So I, number one is I was very much in support of the work that they were doing. And, and I was in support of the feasibility study being completed. And the thing was, is on that, the second meeting when it was set up, I mean, like, okay, well, how are we going to come to some sort of a mind about right. it? Right, right. Um, I could have I could have just voted, 
Um, but I wanted to be part of what, what would, would have been, uh, was well, it was dubbed a consensus thing, and I think there were some legitimate concerns. It didn't really follow the traditional right. uh, form of consensus gathering. Um, <clears throat> uh, so th- that, but I wanted to hear the discussions taking place, and, and in a room that um, there was a relative handful con- compared to the number of people who turned out and voted. Yes. Okay. Um, which is valid too, you know. And I said, well, I don't need, I don't need to say go through two hours of discussion. I already know what I feel. Yeah. I know what I think is the right course of action to take, and I'm going to cast my ballot as such. And and ultimately, that we all did. Okay, for uh, or against, and, and yeah. with a people, a couple of people uh, abstaining. The thing, the point that I would make, Luann, is that if you look at it throughout the history of our people, it's never been about you know a hundred percent. Everybody agrees on every single detail. I'm glad you okay? said that <laughs> because it's really the, yeah. the, the the principle is is consider all things, consider all things, and then you weigh that. And you know what? Both a, a, there were people on both sides who used the same rationale, which is you take into consideration the impact on the environment, yeah. the peace, and the children yet to come. Yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, I'm, I'm happy with the, the turnout, but that's not the end of the discussion. No, no. And, uh, but and I thought it ongoing. was a good start, you know, yeah. and it raised uh, awareness on two very valuable and important issues in the community on the environment side, too. You know, people have been doing what people want it to do. And people, you know, now people are saying we can't continue to do that. So for me, the message was sent. And yeah. people are, you know, when decisions are being made, we're looking holistically and looking at the future generations. And to me, that was a step in the right direction. Yeah. It wasn't perfect, but I thought it as a start. And and to me, that was important. Yeah, I would, I would say look around. And, yeah. And, and there, there isn't anything perfect. Sometimes it's, there's close to perfect confusion yeah. on things. Yeah. <laughs> <There's>, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but but again, you know, uh, and people live with the decision. Now we'll move on in whichever direction it's going to go. But I, again, like I said, I thought it was a process that was uh, uh, helpful. I, I mean, as a as a as a people, I mean, I mean and this is yeah. I'm going to use that as opposed to as a community. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, we 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 are discussers and debaters. Yeah. Okay. Uh, to me, though, I mean, just the one thing if if I if I was to uh, emphasize uh, a traditional way of thinking. Okay, is that when we listen, listen, listen with ears open, okay, and a mind and a heart to hear what the other side has to say, knowing you don't have all the answers yourself, and vice versa. And if you can do that, uh, I believe that we're 99.9% of the way uh, to consensus, and then we can move forward. You know, sometimes moving forward is saying, you know what, we're not ready to make that decision right yeah. now. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes it is just to say, look, let's just go ahead and complete the feasibility study. Yeah. Give that there. Let's not frustrate that. And then we'll have a discussion about, you know, the ultimate placement and home and footprint mm-hmm. of where the actual buildings will be. Like I said, I, th- I thought it was a good starting point. And, yeah. You know, maybe something that could be incorporated uh, into the leadership. Right. You know, uh, because people were talking about that. And I heard that loud and clear, you know, uh, how to get the community engaged and get them out there, you know, to hear their voice. What it, and people had a lot of messages this time of all the elections. Uh, they've been pretty, you know, interested in following over the years. This one, people were speaking loud well, and clear this time. <clears throat> And don't and don't forget. I mean, the, 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 there wasn't. The, there are issues that came out at the timing of the election. It's not like it was a sleepy town. Oh no! Uh, all, all of a sudden, you know, because people were paying attention to things that were happening in the community yeah. as they ought to be. Yes. As they as, yes, as, as they, they need to be. Okay, uh, Ross will take our second break, and we'll be right back. <laughs> And welcome back to Data with Tarda Party Line Talk Show. I'm your host, Lance Stacy, and uh, joining me uh, for MCK Friday is newly elected Chief uh, Ross Montour and former talk show host and <laughs> man about town, I guess, eh, Ross? <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> 
So I guess uh, I wanted to move a little bit further into your week and uh, talk about the signing of the documents, Declaration of Office, Privacy, Respect. What was what was that like? Uh, I'm sure you're familiar with them prior to. Uh, no, I mean, no. You're, the, the, uh, remember, the oath of office is 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 something that I don't think that that really been a or ought not be a, a controversy per se. Um, it's 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 a uh, well, uh, you know, I'm just saying. Yeah. I, I, I and I guess what I'm saying is 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 informed by having been through the process. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, I mean, it was said. You know, I got I got a look. This is just a little bit of an anecdote about my week. Um, the, the Grand Chief, uh, the first uh, official council meeting. Uh, sort of welcoming the uh, welcoming back uh, Lindsay and uh, Mike. Mike and Lloyd yeah. and uh, welcoming us uh, uh, Harry myself uh, and Tanya you know but he said well you know you'll find that some of you have been sort of been on from the outside looking in some of you have been critics uh, of of the process and uh, so when it got to me to introduce yourself I said well you know I said I, the Grand Chief's uh, words are in my mind. I take them to heart, and uh, if, if it helps, I, 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 I would offer a, uh, a, uh, a cartoon burning. Uh, <laughs> every, I know it broke the ice. I, it broke the ice, uh, uh, certainly. But that's a different, you know, it's a different, you're, it Absolutely. is a different position. So now uh, yeah. like coming in. So when you talk about things like the oath of office, you know, it's in uh, my experiences, and I'll give you my viewpoint. Is that you know, uh, it, the, being informed from the inside is a little bit different than when you don't know. I mean, you don't actually don't know um, what is involved. So now, if you now if we segue away from the oath of office into the what's now being called uh, what's it respect privacy and, and privacy respect, and, yeah. and respect thing. I mean that again. You know, I mean, a candidates' night. It's always brought out about, and it's been in the community. For as long as I've been paying attention to what's going in the community, is uh, is confidentiality, is a secrecy clause, is it, uh, you know that sort of a thing, and you know there have been those who I I, I believe in the past have have elected not to, um, but as it was explained to me, I mean I I, I, I understand that in, in our candidates, I said was like you don't. Uh, uh, if you talk about confidentiality, Luann, if, I, if I'm dealing with you on some particular issue of concern to you as a chief, you know, talk, speaking with a community member, then I there's no way I ought to be sitting uh, in any venue, in any place, whether it's my home or whether it's any place, and saying, gee, well, you know what, that's what I want, Luann. Yeah, Luann. yeah, really. Okay, that's confidentiality, you know. Um, but there are times... Um, and, and 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 I and I and I take that with with some degree of respect. Yes. Okay. Uh, is that you might be in a position of sort of uh, uh, getting your ducks in a row, and I, don't, I hope I don't sound just like a politician now. Um, <laughs> Ross, you sounded uh, like the other side now. No, just kidding. <laughs> Well, you're on it. You know, it's not that simple. No, you know, like no, it to I know. say, uh, but like to me, it, it, it's sort of well, okay. You know, it makes sense if say if you're if you're involved in some sensitive negotiations, and there are those things that are happening, um, which it would be detrimental, ultimately to the community to be talking about that openly. Then, then it's respect for that process also. But I think ultimately, um, the, you know, what what. The, the the challenge is always 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 to um, uh, in in the most timely way, in the most transparent way, um, to be open with the community so they they know what they you know what, what everybody needs to know. And that's and that's how I felt about it. I mean, really, I've been gone through the uh, the explanation and the discussions. You know, uh, at the table, I I personally did not have a problem. Uh, with with signing off on, on on that particular document. Okay, so um, you said the process now is going to continue, right? Until it's a month long process month-long right now. Process. We we have a, a, had it, it mapped out. Okay. Uh, for the remainder of this month, and then on into the beginning of oh. September. Okay. Okay. Um, and some things have had to be rescheduled because there because there's travel involved for uh, some of the chiefs. And so some of the things that were on on the on the paper that we had before us that would be in this yes, month or, yes. 
uh, move it a little bit, uh, try to re, and you have to be able to do that. But I mean, it's a lengthy process. Somebody asked me, well, have you got all the uh, portfolios all sorted out yet? And, yeah. and now let's look at that's under a different uh, a process, a process which I agree with him. Mean, it, it's been under de- development uh, since before the election. Uh, process that is being called SOD, which is the Strategic Organizational Development a process. Uh, uh, and, and that looks at, you know, let's say, here are the list of, as many as you can say, or name, or anticipate creating files, um, portfolios, or whatever, which are internal, and those which are external. And the areas of overlap. Uh, and then share, really sharing out the load according to interest, talent, uh, right. uh, some, 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 some basic knowledge about, and with room to grow into those things too, Absolutely. because I mean, you, even I, like I could say to you and people could have the perception that over the, over the years that I have been involved in Ganawagi in terms of observing, uh, politics internally and externally, um, it's a, a again, I mean, it's, it's a different thing. Uh, seeing it from inside, um, and 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 you have to look at wow, you know, I mean that's that's an eye opener, um, and then you find out, you know, like we were talking about, we're talking about one thing or we're talking about another. We could be talking about the MTQ, and the bridge, okay, and and the impacts there. We could be talking about uh, Highway One Thirty Two. We could be talking about uh, all 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 sorts of things. But you, you, some of those things, I mean, you. You, you have to sort of d- develop okay and it's going to shift a little bit you yeah. know like uh, I mean I, 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 I dearly want to go to uh, you know as, as many kind of uh, um, uh, v- travel to specific events you know uh, as, as possible you know in terms of my role as, a, as, as somebody on the Mohawk Council of Ganawagi. Yeah. So where do you, where's your interest? Like we don't have to talk about portfolios, but what are things that really you think you can tr- contribute in, in certain areas? What are the areas that you think you bring something to? And are there Well, any- I mean, I think it's, 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 it's a mix of uh, internal and external. Yeah. You know, I, mm-hmm. I, for, for instance, you know, I know there, there are people say, uh, that say, uh, 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 I'm aware that Mike DeLille has uh, say been, active still outside of office or not so he's been on like the board of directors for uh the community services, services yeah uh i on the other hand have been uh, involved also with them partly that's an outgrowth of being a foster parent yeah but also being you know uh, having um a uh, situation of having my granddaughters uh and i don't know if i'm sort of going all over lines there so i'm going to keep it like down to that um as as a result, you know, right, one of the things that uh, I've been involved with is a, a small ad hoc group. I'm calling it that, whether it be officially that or not, but it's for want of better words, uh, speaking with uh, people at KSCS uh, and uh, in terms of need, uh, the need to see, you know, you have like the uh, the Quebec uh, uh, Child Protect uh, Youth Service Protection Youth Act, Protection, okay, yeah. and then you have the Order of Social Work and. Um, Sometimes we, you, you, as much as you want, we have a Gunawanki vision statement. Which, by the way, we should everything that we do, we should be we should be looking at that and saying, are we adhering to that as, to the best of our ability? Okay. Uh, so when you take something like the the uh, the Youth Protection Act of Quebec, uh, I, that's not something that that you should be content to simply. I'll use the term beat and feather it. Absolutely. We have we, what I said. We have to indigenize that, and there is work being done. I just I just learned. You know, the, there is work being done with the Youth Protection of related to Youth Protection Act, and we need to have jurisdiction over that. You know, we should be we should be hearing those those. Um, uh, uh, cases, if you want to refer to it that way, with, within a, a uh, you know a, a court of Ganawagi that has been capacitated to deal with those things. Uh, so again, I mean that's 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 an interest too. Uh, in terms of it's it's local, but it's also external, but it's also governance related. Absolutely, I think almost everything comes uh, comes not exclusively one piece well, like it's it's, it's it's connected right you look at this from from Absolutely. the top it looks one way yeah uh walk around it and you see there's this side yeah. to it yeah and all around and underneath yeah and then you have then you have a sense of uh 
the elephant, yeah. as it were. Yeah, you know? and, and, and I think, uh, you know, Gus and Aoi Sky Deers talked about that often, that, you know, that there is in our community. And I think that's important, again, because those are the things sometimes that we're not speaking about that cost us the most energy. Mm-hmm. You know, um, whatever it is on, on any given issue, you know, whether it's youth protection or some other issue, you know, language culture has always been that, you well, know, yeah. finally we're progressing, yeah. you know. I mean, you know, there's some things, like one thing that uh, I, before, well, during the 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 uh, election process, I, I mean, I was approached by uh, uh, people from um, uh, Gardi Winoru, okay, and and uh, what what their what their concern is about their own future uh, and the ability to carry on, and uh, you know maybe their difficulties that I'm, I I don't want to talk about right now no. you know because because of confidentiality mm-hmm. between me and those people, but there but there are concerns but ultimately you know what the thing is Luann is um, if, if you strip that all away and whatever you know uh, the the. Uh, discussions or arguments could be the one thing we all would agree on okay we need to do everything within our power to ensure that our language continues to survive you know what i'm always reminded of is uh, that and somebody alluded it to running up to the election and they didn't quite quote it in the way it was said historically and as a uh, pierre elliott trudeau remarked way back in the 60s. Well, if you people don't, uh, if you don't speak your own language and if you don't follow your own things, you can't, you shouldn't expect to have uh, rights advanced to you, okay? Uh, And I totally disagree with that. (laughs) It's not for him. It was not for him him to to say say it, right? Nor anybody else since him. Yeah. Uh, But that said, um, there's so much knowledge bound up within the knowledge of our language, okay, about our culture and our values, that we have to do everything possible. And one of the ways that you can show it was brought up that um, uh, we are losing our, you know, our elder first language speakers. They are passing to the next world, okay? And we need to be able to ensure that our first language speakers still, and one of the ways, one of the, uh, one of the most, I think, most effective ways is, is a language nest kind of a setting. Yeah. But how do we how do we channel our, our resources and our creativity to see that they receive funding? You know, one of the things that I, or the government has talked about: oh, well, we're going to fund language uh, reparations and, and and preservation. But is the rhetoric outstrip the action? And that's where we have to press hard Absolutely. on them. But inside, we have to look at creative ways. So let's how can we make sure this continues to go yeah. on? I think that's a good one. Um, any surprises to you? Any surprises? Yeah. You know, it'd be easy to say yes or no. Um, and, and you, you know, I, and I hesitate to even characterize it that way. <laughs> uh, I, I could say, you know what I, the thing is, is um, on one hand, I could tell you that to walk in and you realize just how much is actually going on and how many, how many the different departments and, uh, and, and I'll say this. Okay. Um, it can be very daunting. Yeah. Okay. You can feel like, you know, uh, you could go to feeling overwhelmed, but dang it, at the end of the day, you know what I'm saying? I'm excited. <laughs> I knew I'm, you would I'm, be, I'm but excited. I had to ask. This is really, really <laughs> exciting. Uh, and it's something I, you know, I, I want to be a part of and, and I, I'm a part of, yeah. and I'm going to be a part of, you know, <laughs> So. That's why I ask because I know this is it, it's like the perfect job for you because you, you dabble in lots of different things. You're involved. You're you're knowledgeable. So to me, the transition is quite easy. You know, and 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 that was why I asked well, the question again. I'm not I'm I'm not going to uh, I'm not going to assume it's going to be a cakewalk. Oh, I didn't because say I, that. I, I I think that yeah. you know what you you have to count some of the load. You yeah. can't you can't expect to carry every load yourself. No. So you 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 need to be able to build relationships there. Yeah. To be able to say, hey, we're a team. Let's work together. Let's carry the load all together and get this done. I think through Candidates Night, some of the returning um, candidates talked about that, being part of a team and being supportive, whether you agree or not. And I think, you know, that that's something that I, I, I would expect from you. Key for me, Luann, 
Well, uh, in my decision to to uh, again seek uh, a seat on Mohawk Council was the understanding that things are playing out on the national level from the federal government. And to me, you know, it doesn't. We went through like ten or eleven years of really a brutal, brutal regime. I, I'm going to call it that way with uh, Stephen Harper as yeah. a regime. Okay, in terms of our interests and our causes. Okay, but we went through that before with Robert Nault and the First Nations Governance Act. Yeah. So this is not news. Okay. Okay, so so the face may change a little, but it is still the same the same creature. And so ultimately, we are always going to have to be prepared to take it to task. And that's why I said the the uh, running for council this time uh, was knowing that you know that battle is going. They have a plan for us which is not our own. Absolutely. You know, and we have to define for ourselves. And and one of the things that's heartening to me is that. You know, I, I, I'm i not coming in with some shiny new thing no. that, I, that yeah. I walked into or that nobody ever saw before because I'm, I understand that, that the people sitting around that table um, are all focused on that. Now we may, you know, we're, we're at, we have, again, there's that uh, example of this this thing on, on, on the table. What does it look like from here? What does it look from, what do you perceive? What do you perceive? And let's, let's, let's figure out what it is all together. And, that, and, that, and, and my feeling about that uh, this week has been really, really positive. And, I, and I'd like to share that. Um, uh, I, 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 some of the things that I've heard in terms of uh, um, the uh, economic outlook for Gunawagi. I mean, we, we, as I mentioned earlier, yeah. is that, you know, we went through a period where we, we were sort of looking at having a surplus that was diminishing over time because, you know, the, the government, the, the caps were not increasing and the needs were in the, uh, were the demands were growing. And, and so departments were being asked to cut, you know, X amount of percentage off. Uh, and now things are looking much more positive. So that much I can share. I think uh, I, I can share that without uh, crossing over uh, my oath of, uh, of respect. <laughs> 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 oh, and also, listen, just to put you out there, uh, we'll, see, we'll see you at the powwow. Yes, absolutely. I wanted to mention uh, before we end it, I wanted to say thank you. I thought this was probably the most relaxed uh, discussion I've ever had with a chief. I, I don't know if it's because we worked before or what it was, but usually sometimes I, I, I find it can be a little bit intimidating. I don't feel that with well, you Well, you know at what, Lynn, is, it, is, it, is a, 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 quite rightly, they shouldn't always be just cakewalks. Okay? Yeah, absolutely. There are times to challenge me. Yeah. There will be times where I will be challenged. Oh, Ross, I can't it, wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but 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 when you're challenged, you grow. Eh? Yeah, absolutely. But that's that's my view. So it's a very busy weekend. Powell this weekend. We have Senior B Lacrosse with Indians and Mohawks on Saturday at eight o'clock. And tonight, I have I have to pitch this. Go Hunters, go! That's all I got to say. Uh, junior Junior B Lacrosse. Iroquois Nationals also. And Iroquois Nationals people, okay. watch it. Support our guys. A uh, lot happening, and I know they're going to come back. All right, Nyawa <laughs> Goa. Nyawa for coming in. I look forward to uh, our our future discussion. Discussions and uh, thank you for the treat. It was really nice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> my my first uh, chief thing for the new uh, new election. So ha- up next with the one o'clock news is Paul Grafe. Have a great afternoon, everybody, and a great weekend. Be safe. Onigiwahi. Onigiwahi.